Hello, my name is Altan, and welcome to something rather different than what I usually do. I'm going to talk about modding Galactic Civilizations 2. My channel subscribers have probably figured out by now I am quite fond of this game and I've been very busy modding it. But I figured I might as well share some info on that because, you know, the whole video thing is kind of cool too. So, what are we going to do? Well, this is a custom race. And it actually has an inherent race ability. Wasn't that cool? So, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. First of all, uh, you know how to do all this. Custom race making. Yeah, usually I use create new opponent. And then I set the settings. Something like this. I set either good or uh, very good, evil, neutral, and anything. D depending on what I think the race needs. Um, race behavior, I don't actually do that from here at all, ever. Um, so, text is something I do edit from here. But the best way to actually really customize your custom race is to do a bit of a file edit. Now, before you can do that, you need to know where those files are located. Well, uh, depending on your installation of Windows, uh, that could be anywhere. So what you need to do is you need to go to your My Documents folder, and you should have a My Games folder over there. And in that folder should be another folder called GC2 Twilight Arno. That one will contain your preferences, but more importantly, it will contain all of your race configuration, including the major saves and anything else, really. Save games are in there too, but it's these race config dot, uh, race config XML files that you are actually looking for. There's very simple text files, and all you need to do to edit them is to just open them in Notepad. So let's see. This is the YouTube demo race, which I've briefly shown you. Now you are limited to assigning 15 points to properties here. 15 points quite a bit com compared to what you get for a regular race, but they already have bonuses and penalties. Um, but not, you're not able to actually set penalties, so that pretty much limits what you can do. So let's just take a look at these settings what and how they correspond with what you're probably already familiar with in game. Oh, you might want to set your game to a window. Uh, at 1024768, smallest thing really. And you also probably want to create a shortcut with a cheat behind it. I usually put the W within, behind it too because that actually enables window mode, but you're better off just creating a smaller window and add that cheat function. You'll really need that. Okay, so let's take a look at the file and how things correspond here. Your race name is always the file name. So if you change the race name, you're actually creating a new race and not overriding the old one. So keep that in mind when you decide your race should have a different name. You're probably better off just deleting the old files and then just continuing editing the new file. Anyway, uh, race name YouTube demo again corresponds to what this says. This is always synced to each other, so don't bother. The config version, race ID and SIF type tell the game which version of the game it's playing or config or whatever. This will tell the game it's a custom race. This will tell the game it's a major race. You don't want to screw around with this. Uh, you can actually make multiple customizations of a major civilization given different names, but you can only add one of those to the game. Custom races are not limited by that. You can actually add as many to the game as you want which is why this is important. The display name is the full empire name. That's this race name. Now, that will actually be thrown into short empire name as well. Now, short empire name is something that your civilization is referred to in many research uh, research texts. Say you research something and then you actually see something uh, referring to you. That usually uses a short empire name. Uh, same in diplomatic discussions with other races. Now it's a small thing, but uh, you don't see Torian Confederation every time you talk to the Torians. You see Torians. You can edit that by just simply changing that. That's the first option you don't get in-game. 
I skipped over alignment. That's actually, you know, if, whether or not you're good or evil or neutral. Um, below 50 is evil. Above 50 is good. 50 is neutral. Um, race leader self, well, explains itself. So is home world and custom star as a home star actually refers to a normal, well, actually a star defined in a file. You can actually create your own custom star systems and have the your custom race use those by simply editing this. Now that is not as difficult as it sounds, but I'm going to do a separate episode on doing that. It's going to be really short, but this is the basis anyway. So, Generate a description. If this is a 1, that means that the description of your race is actually generated by the game. Uh, I'd recommend you actually edit your descriptions from within the text file because the actual editing screen for that is ludicrously small. Um, you'll, if you run a try proper de decent uh, description, you'll actually go way below this. You might see this as a natural limitation, but eh, I don't. I see it as a limitation only. Feel free to disagree, but anyway, I like editing in here anyway. Um, the AI personality that corresponds to what you pick over here. Now the dialogue tag also corresponds to what you pick over here. And now things get a bit iffy. You see, you got a couple of choices here: human, Drenjin, Torin, all of them. They're all here, including generic. Now. The thing is, when you pick, for example, human, you're not just picking human, you're also picking dialogue tag and AI personality at the same time. For humans, that's eight. But for the Drengen, that will be seven. And dialogue tag, Drengen. And This is where you can do some really cool things. You can actually set a different dialogue in comp and a different AI, which is not supported by the game as a selection. So you can have the Arceans play as the humans. Or something like that. The truth of the matter is the dialogue tag simply tells the game, look, these guys are acting like Arceans, so talk to them as if they are Arceans, and if you're playing against them, they'll talk to you as if they are Arceans. So that's how that works. Um, the eye personality is way more interesting. You got four choices. That is seven, which is the Drenjin, Jor, and Karath AI. That's the only one that can use spore ships, and I recommend you don't use it unless your species actually uses spore ships. That's the super annihilator. All right, let's try that again. The super annihilator ability. There we go. Eight is the AI used by the humans, Thalens, Kryn, and oh god, Drath. Right. Um, this is one of the better AIs. Um, yeah. It's very much into culture tech, uh, and also very, very, very into weapon tech. Uh, not so much for defense, research tech, or biology tech. Hmm. Tens busted, don't bother. Um, Eleven. Eleven is also a quite good AI. It will focus mostly on biology and research technology. It likes weapons too. It's very shy of culture tech. For example, so if you want to have a trade heavy race, don't pick this AI. If you want a trade heavy race, pick this AI. Or this one. But this AI tends to expand very poorly. This one tends to, well, not really do such a good job of managing its planets. So 8 or 11. My mod APT only uses 8 and 11 for that reason. But it's your choice. You can do whatever you want. Right, moving on. Portrait. Default trade portrait movie and trade movie friendly and unfriendly. This refers to what you see when you talk to a race. We'll get to that in a separate video. I'm not going to touch on that right now. Uh, suffice to say, you can do some really awesome things. The robot movie is the movie you see when you do a research project. So, news robot alien refers to the alien type robot. And you also got Terra. Not very really important. Uh, robot image. Um, my guess would be that's the pop-up where you see when you, for example, uh, complete a project or get a warning for something. Race music tells the game which MP3 to play. It should play when you talk to it or when they talk to you. Now, 
here's where things get cool. Uh, by default, uh, every custom race uses the Terran race music, which is race 00. zero. Now, all this does is refer to files which should be in your galsif 2 folder in the folder event music. This is where you can find those music files. You can play them of course, they're mp3, so feel free. Um, but every single custom race will have this tune. Combine that with the fact that all the miners use it as well, that can get pretty boring if you're in a sieve, you know, in a, in a universe which has like 9 out of 10 custom races. So, what can you do about that? Well, you can actually play any file like, as long as it's in a event music folder. When I say a, I do mean that, because Dark Avatar, which is the expansion you own if you have Twilight of the Honor as well, so... And you should totally play it, it's awesome! Everybody likes Twilight, but oh, I digress. Anyway, um, that has three, actually two themes, the Karav and the Kryn. Uh, those were added in that expansion, so that's why that's there. Uh, and then, of course, there's the Twilight folder as well, which is not in Dark Avatar. Uh, let's see, event music. So yeah, you can play these as well if you want to. Um, yeah, you'll know those. Anyway, you can of course do something way cooler, and that is throw in your own MP3s, which is actually the point I was trying to make. Well, you don't necessarily need to add those to a game folder that exists. You can throw those in a mod folder if you have it. Uh, for example, I always run with my own mod, which also has an event music folder. So if you activate that mod, you can actually throw your game music in here as well. Now. I've actually scrounged a few MP3s from Galsif 1 as well. So, what I've done for the YouTube demo race is to simply pick the Kryn theme. So that will play when the game starts, uh, when you actually talk to these guys. And well, that's pretty much it. Political party, race call and all that stuff, really, just set that in the interface itself. Way easier. Now, tech is a different matter. In tech, you are totally limited to the points. Well, you're not that limited when you're actually editing the file. You can add any tech in your selected tech tree, which is the minor tech, race tech tree in this case, to your race as a starter tech. And it's simple to do. All you need to do is find out the identity of a tech you want to add and add it like so, with the tech and tech tags. And as you can see, it's right there. Universal Translator and Alliances. Those were ones I actually added manually. Now to do that, you'll need to find out which IDs that race uses. That is not that difficult. First thing you'll need to do is actually go to your Twilight of the Honor folder. and then find the Tools folder. There's no shortcuts anywhere for these. You'll actually have to look up the folder. Now what you're actually looking for is GC2 Tech 3 Editor. Start that up. There you go. That's the Tech 3 Editor. This thing is going to get its own episode, I guess. But for now, let's just stick to the basic. Open up a Tech Tree. Quite simple. You can find them in your Twilight Data English Tech Tree folder. This tool only supports Twilight of the Honor tech trees. It does not load Galsif 2 or Galsif 2 Dark Avatar tech trees. Because that game only has one tech tree. Anyway, I'm going to pick the Minor Race tech tree. If you're running a mod like APT, uh, pick the Mods tech tree, which I'm not doing right now because I'm assuming you're not running a modded game. If you are, you know where your mod's located, and it's just a matter of navigating there with this. You know how to do that. Well, anyway, this is what the tech IDs look like. Um, there's quite a lot of them, so anything you want to add, not a problem. That's listed right over there. Or here, you can copy and paste it from here quite easily. You can't edit it, but you can copy it. So, copy it, throw it in there if you want to. And that's all there's really to it. 
and you can create some really interesting races. Uh, for example, I've created a custom race which actually starts with uh, radioactive world colonization, something that none of the races in the game actually have. Uh, but I've given them a bit of a penalty which, well, negates that advantage just a bit. Let's continue. AI abilities and aggression. Uh, aggression is this. It's the likelihood of that they'll go to war with you. Um, financial resources. Financial resources and AI abilities and all that stuff is also determined by the difficulty level at which you're playing. So, um, not that de important to actually edit. No. Um, if you actually start editing this stuff, uh, to, it says 200, so anyway, leave that. Um, or set it to 100 if you're brave. Right, financial resources, all that stuff. Um, the game will override that depending on how you're playing. So, let's see. Abilities descriptions. Uh, that's a nice finishing touch. That's what this is. Now, what you want to be careful with is adding enters to this because that doesn't work. Throw it on one line. The default game actually will throw that at you. It will actually have something like uh, like minus uh, high good research search and then enter bad economy. What the game actually will do is keep adding enters every time you edit that. So eventually you're going to end up with something like this. That's kind of bad. So I strive... Actually one of the things I did in APT was actually get rid of that. So put it on one line. Super ability. Well, that's this of course. There, there we go. Uh, but no, great. Uh, research advantage. Yeah, I've actually never checked this. Feel free to, but this, I suppose, gives them a bit of a research advantage when they are trying to research any yellow tech. That's what we call her. Never really bothered looking that up. Don't see, don't see it working that well anyway. Right, let's talk about these then. We got economics here, which is set to 30, which is this, the inherent race ability I gave this species. Now the ability zero is actually also economics, but in this case, it's actually the amount of bonus percentage you get for investing points. So editing this manually, say I put this on uh, on 30, will actually select this. I never use that here. I never edit ability values. I stick to these. That's inherent race abilities. That's something you can't set outside of the game. So you can give it an economic ability or a minus 30 weapon ability. It doesn't matter. It will work. The game will pick it up. And this of course allows you to do some offsetting for any advanced tech you may have given your race. So you can balance them out a bit. Um, well, most of the options which are in here is stuff you probably know from your selections here. But there's actually a couple of them which you're probably not aware of interest rates for example something you probably don't see within the game all that much if ever which actually refers to your ability to pay less um, interest on any loans you have outstanding I don't know about you guys but I never ever loan money in the game um, trade routes plan quality crime I don't think that actually does anything cabinet neither does that anything do anything it's also not in the game anyway Government might set a government, um, but logistics, no, that one we know. Hmm. Every custom race gets logistics 6. Now the major sifts vary that a bit. For example, the Iconians get 10 and the uh, Alterans get 5, I believe. Now you can of course start editing this. So you can give your race the ability to have more ships grouped up at the beginning of the game. Miniaturization is also not listed, so you can, you know, increase or even decrease miniaturization. Home planet quality doesn't seem to work. You can also give them the ability to actually colonize stuff by setting that here. Put a 1 here and they'll have 50%, 2 is 100% usage. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this trick though. 
I'd go with them um, text because I think the AI will actually research attack anyway that might work for you but keep in mind that when you're playing against your race you also want them to do a bit well you know you want them to do well enough for them to be interesting to play against because ultimately what makes this game interesting is playing against cool races um, so yeah war profiteering is of course well something only the draft and the core get um, this will make you money if people go to war now that is easy money and uh, probably a constant source of revenue now the draft gets something like 12 percent of this and it will make him a ton of money so keep in mind that even one or two percent of this is already a big deal and persistent trade routes um, also one of those things that's not listed here might give him a route that won't be broken I don't know I tend to stick to the regular ones because um, I've seen what other penalties act like but you of course feel free to toy around with this now if you start editing this a simple trick is to actually say I give him 10 research and I want to know if that works so all you need to do now is just load up YouTube demo and see research 10 that's what it says now you can do your editing of course and you can actually set stuff here and if you save it just reload the file and you'll have speed to set in this file if you don't you keep reloading the one that doesn't have a speed bonus but for the um, for setting penalties and inherit racial bonuses I just edit this and load it up and see if it works now that is pretty much it when it comes to customizing your race you can do all sorts of cool stuff within this text but most most custom races will look uh, a bit off for example if um, no let's see he 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 see that All right I'll actually throw you out and I'll actually add YouTube demo to this how about that you can actually see how that works and you'll notice the difference if the game loads did I press next I did alright so I mentioned activating cheat codes if you're going for custom races um, this is where that in, that comes in handy um, right basically I want to see if my custom races work and what they'll talk like so what you do is um, for example I want to get universal translator first so I hit control R to research my current tech and Universal Translator is selected, I'll hit Control R again. You can hit Control Shift R and s just research everything. Um, but, you know, that'll actually ask you, I'll just show you. That'll ask you if you want to go, which alignment you want to go, so you want to go neutral. Then you have to click a gazillion times on this. So now you've researched absolutely everything. But now you can't, well, you can't tell if they got alliances tech, I suppose. Anyway, let's have a little chat with our neighbors. I'm going to hit Control U, which will discover the entire universe. So here we go. We got generic leader looks off, which is the race I quickly made to show my point uh, and how you we're, we're going to cover in the next video as well. We're nearly at the end here, people. Uh, this is your typical custom race: a stretched picture with Terran music. Yay! This is YouTube demo. And he talks like a Drenjin, as I mentioned. And he has an animation! Oh my god, he's animated! And he has to create music. Ooh. So how cool is that? So, next up, YouTube demo race was... was <laughs> demonstrated purposes. Yes, it is. Um, but anyway, these guys look like a proper proper sieve they don't look out of place within the game so how did I do that how is it done well we'll cover that in the next episode of this guide thank you all for watching this guy part of the guide do hope you all enjoyed that and I'll see you all next time goodbye for now